So as you, the body moves from here to the intake for processing, the finish load of the process product that leaves the other hole to the store. This project was started in... Yes, let's... Uh, okay. Uh, we can go inside to see what we... Agree. Uh, background information. Um, if we had gone through the existing rice mills, in Abakaliki Urban, you would have appreciated why we took the drastic decision to send all of them packing to start afresh in any of the three cluster zones. Uh, it's not hygienic enough, and uh, rice processing started in the town there around uh, the early 1940s. Now the city is expanding, it's ne it needs to be improved upon in terms of aesthetics and uh, sanitation. And that's why we decided that we should move away from the city. And uh, in choosing the local governments where these uh, new processing machines are located, we took into account the productive ability of each local government. Recall, sir, that uh, the present Anambra, Enugu, and two-thirds of uh, official statistics show that this local government was the biggest rice producer. That informed the decision to locate it here. In uh, the northern zone, Izi is the biggest producer of rice. And in the southern zone, you have two local governments competing. Uh, Africa South and uh, Ivo. So we've spread the distribution to get to the areas that are best known for rice production. This uh, project was conceived in 2009 during my holidays in London and uh, I discussed with uh, the representative of Satake of Japan invited him to come to a Bonny state. So based on that visit, he inspected the environment and we decided to establish this edifice. Uh, the capacity is five tons per hour and uh, so far it is not yet completed. We had proposed to do the test run last December believing that the rice to be consumed at Christmas would be processed in these centers. Uh, that never happened. There were still some finishing touches to be added. Uh, we expected the people mid-January they are yet to come. But hopefully in the next two, three weeks, they must be here to do the test running of these two, which are now ready. Um, the parboiling unit is not yet part of it for two reasons. We didn't have enough funds to do all at a time. We decided to go gradually. Secondly, we wanted the traditional parboilers to phase out gradually and not in one fell swoop. And that is what we are doing now. Contract has been awarded for the procurement of three parboiling units, one for each of the, the, the machines. And uh, we expect in two months' time to have the first delivery. That way, we believe that by the end of this year, latest, all the three giant plants will have all the units complete. Um, like the commissioner said, the big store you saw there is for storing raw grains which will be transferred into the parboiling unit and after parboiling transferred again into this processing area and uh, after processing the final product goes into the store behind us for bagging and uh, and uh, uh, sales 
that is the arrangement in brief. The entire layout is mapped out for those we are displacing from the town to take up uh, new uh, zones, new, 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 new areas of, uh, of uh, processing, so to speak. Because not all the rice farmers will have enough quantity of grains for this size of uh, a processing machine. So they will still continue to patronize the small units of uh, entrepreneurs whom we are asking to come here and uh, establish. They, they are at liberty to choose any of the three sites, but we have enough land already mapped out, parcelated uh, for allocation. Uh, more than 70 people have applied in all the three zones. Uh, you may correct me, Commissioner. And uh, we've also awarded the contract for the internal roads, which will also be asphalted to have a very clean environment. Uh, you may want to help me on, and explain further. Commissioner for Public Utilities on the parboiling aspect. Yes, Your Excellency, the contract for the parboiling unit uh, was awarded last year to the Chinese company who are supposed to resume work as early as uh, this January, but uh, I think they're still preparing themselves. The Kabole unit is uh, <coughs> six tons per, per hour, and uh, beyond that, sir, we intend to run this uh, this factory um, using biomass power plant, which already we have an experimental biomass power plant working now at Ungo. So the waste from the rice meal, the rice husk. We are going to use to power biomass plants that we run the rice mill, and that is the way we can get the rice at the cost that will be competitive enough. Thank you, sir. Cost of the project, the machine itself, uh, when it was uh, procured, was 1.029 billion naira uh, at, at 2009. The structure itself was consulted at the cost, awarded at the cost of 887 million naira, which was completed in 2010, uh, while the, the, the warehouses we are seeing, the sixth number of them has been constructed at the, at the cost of 835 million naira. Uh, this cost uh, excludes the, the power, the 500 kVA provided in each of them. The, all the electrical installations and the water supply are not included in the cost I've just given so far. And I want to inform you that the, the plant is fully automated and producing 5 metric tons per hour. Just to add, we trained uh, we, uh, nine of our engineers in Japan to man the three stations. Uh, short term courses uh, in March last year. That's all. Well, um, I will ask so, a, a question. How does the state government intend to run this place? Is it going to be government producing rice and selling to Nigerians? Or do you have an arrangement to hand over to the private sector? We made it clear from the beginning that government has no time to run businesses. But we have to show the light so that people will see the way. We don't intend to handle it ourselves. We don't have the time and government generally is a bad manager of uh, businesses. So that is simply the, the true position. Um, we trained farmers in Songhai, as I said this morning, and uh, we expect them to be partners in progress at the fullness of time. Uh, they will indicate the level of interest of participation 
and we will then decide whether it will be PPP or entirely uh, given out to the private sector. But uh, we think this sort of, the quality of rice we are going to get here will definitely stimulate farmers to produce more. Um, Your Excellency, I make that comment deliberately um, because I believe the best time to begin to think about the arrangement for this place to run is now. If you wait until it is completed, I am sure you will find difficulties. So as government is putting finishing touches to this meal, it's wiser to begin to open bids and look at options for private sector participation so that they take off together with you and give this place first class commercial management. You are a better place person than me to understand this because of your background and uh, you are a private sector person. Because we have seen so much government investment at the federal level on down the drains. Immediately you finish you leave it in the hands of government or something like this that is directly business driven they will just pull bring it down so um now that we have initiated because to industrialize and under under developed country like this I, i'm one of those who strongly hold the opinion that government must initiate industrialization because if you say let private sector come and do it they may never come and then you keep waiting and waiting until in the end you'll be frustrated. The government, because we have more resources than any private person, where we see an area of intervention, we should do so. But our past experience is clear. As we do so, we look for somebody to begin to work up aside. When we are finishing, we are taking over the management. I must commend you because <clears throat> this is a very huge plant. And uh, we have always known Abakeleke to be associated with rice, not just for people, but all over the country. We eat of other rice, even in the presidency. That's what the president eats every time. You don't, you don't find any imported rice in the president's menu. The rice comes from Abakeleke and other places, even as of now. So we want to let Nigerians know that the best way we can develop this country is to stop this craze of rice importation. We were at uh, Adani in uh, Inugu State yesterday, the day before yesterday, and 50 hectares of land developed waiting for rice to be produced. We've been, the problem has to do with complete restoring the irrigation program that, that, that went aground. And we went to Lower Anambra. We saw again huge possibilities, and we have these facilities all over the country. So, um, <laughs> The president has said between now and 2015, Nigeria must be self-sufficient in rice production. If we are not, it will ban rice importation, and then we will be compelled to produce rice here. There is no reason for Nigeria to import rice. No reason at all. We should be exporting rice. And thank you for the vision to begin the process of milling the rice that will compete and overtake the one that comes from Thailand and other places. We really think that this is a visionary investment. Like my data once he says. Honorable Minister, sir, um, what I want to say, the Honorable Minister has touched upon it. And um, the first is to say that to be part of this good governance talk, to me, is a great honor to be in a state state uh, because his name, His Excellency the Governor. Anyone familiar with the evolution of your state knows that you played a, a great role there. And perhaps that explains some of the things that I have noticed. The first is that for every project we have visited, the quality of work is standard. This is it. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to humor him. He's, he's old enough to be my father, and I wouldn't do such a thing. Uh, from the roads to the bridges, to this particular plant. The second is that there is a clear effort at creating necessary linkages between free education at the primary and secondary levels and the 
job the people will do when they leave school. Because when you look at a plant like this, for a place that traditionally is rice producing, it means that from inception, from the cradle, children can begin to grow from the traditional to the modern. Because you don't just produce people from school and they have nowhere to go to. And to add to it that he has plans to privatize this place, it means that jobs will grow in exponential rates. And without this, we can make no progress. So I'd like to thank him and to say that I am learning. Who knows? The other thing I'd like to mention, Honorable Minister, is to thank you and to congratulate you and Mr. President for this talk. I'm a journalist and a publisher. And I ask myself, time and again, what we read, what we publish on television, on radio, in the magazine, is that all that there is to Nigeria? It's amazing what level of effort and development is happening in the state capitals at the rural levels that are not reported. It's a big challenge for us who are journalists. Honestly, it's a big challenge. Because, and, look, the magnitude of this, it may, not be, it may not leave the front page of any newspaper tomorrow. Rather, we may talk about somebody who slapped another person. And it gives all depressing people, because you not get the impression that nothing is happening, that the country is dying. This talk shows that this country is not dying. This occasion, whereupon you are honoring the states of the Federation, uh, Bonnie State Inclusive, you are welcome, Honorable Minister. Madam, how now? Are you happy? Are you want to get What do you do with but I don't know if you love her. But I don't know if you love her. 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 I don't know if you love I'm your rich, a rich decision. I have a thousand, who bought the motor for the mother of the kicker, one thousand get a jet, a good apple jet, a rich apple click. He let that in my room. He probably married one broom broom. But I'm not having my dish if I'm about to look at Bonya Bonya for Muga. The magic from my lab about this house. A bonyas and to build a foundation that will last to the next ten generations to come. The women of Iko local government are visibly happy. You can see that uh, smiles are dangling on their faces. Manifestation that what has never happened before, what they have never dreamt, is happening. Good roads, ultra-modern water scheme. This rice mill, they are saying that Iko people are known for rice farming. And they have been painstakingly farming going to farm without making gains. They will get their rice and transport their rice to Abakalike. Sometimes the pregnant women will have miscarriage on the process of dry rice and the processes of uh, rice production. Yet they will not make gains. But these days, with this rice, what the rice we are producing here is adjourned the best rice, more than even the foreign rice were important. They are saying it's hope upon hope that the governor is a man and indeed, the people of Ebony State are happy for what the governor is doing. Thank you, Your Honorable Minister. We add that. His Excellency, the President, has designated Ebony as one of the rice processing zones and centers in Nigeria. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture has come here several. We are just going to look at another project close to your own now being run by the federal government and I want the women to know that even now Mr. President is only eating their own rice at Asso Villa yeah. President has stopped eating rice from uh, Thailand or anywhere, he's eating abakilike rice now, a boiling rice that is the one that uh, President Jonathan 
and uh, Her Excellency, the First Lady, that's the rice from Eboni, that's the one that they are eating in Abuja now. So which means that we believe in you. And before long, by the grace of God, given the effort your governor is doing and the effort that the federal government is putting in, if we continue to work like this, you will be exporting rice to other parts of the world. So work very hard, cooperate with the government, and I know rural you have farm our farmers are very strong, very hard working. So what we are trying to do now is to promote you, bringing this means here to make your business easier. So organize yourselves into cooperatives so that when these things are ready, you will take the front lead, create jobs, earn money to pay your children's school fees, and to wear better dress as you they wear now. Yes. Uh, Abi, thank you very much. You can come up. You this. Come up. Put that on the ground. This is the input point. And then go to tons and tons of it. Put it you put it in, it gets, gets picked up by the machine and goes right to clean up, polishing, milling, all the distoning. All the processes are done here. And then the chaff is also discharged and collected at the other end. For six to seven hours. After which we boil them there at the other end. And then the paddy, the wet paddy is now set up in the dryer. This is the dryer we make the heat. I have to Okay. We have a laboratory here where we test uh, raw materials and form to the different processes and the different uh, process points. We check the quality, the tone, the clarity, all the elements, the bunch of content we do here. Uh, and we monitor the... <laughs> The line can fill 50 kilo, it can fill 50 kilo, 25 kilo, 10 kilo, and 5 kilo. We are also planning to put a smaller bag size of two of a, of a, a model size. Uh, this is clean rice. Um, can I just have a look? Just, just, can, can I see? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Sorry, just, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Hold the bag. Hold the bag. You can see. Very high quality standard. It meets all the international standards. At the back here, we gather all the rubbish. Can I just show you briefly? We, we gather all the, the dust and the chaff. Behind us is a whole support structures of uh, infrastructure, power, and all that. We don't have any power here from public supply. We are running entirely on generators. Um, for doesn't produce enough water. Is this is the type of soil that we have here? So because of that challenge, we have to get uh, water from the cross river. Okay, maybe you would like to take one or two questions. Okay, sure. Market has now sell to individuals because I really. I want to see how it benefits the, the poor man here in the Ipo local material. Uh, the meal is is a, very beneficial to the community in Ipo. Um, employment is one major benefit. Most of the staff we have are from Ipo local government, largely in Ebony State. In terms of selling rice, we don't sell individual bags of rice to individual consumers. It's a bit difficult to manage in terms of the organization. So we sell to distributors. There are some staff sales. 
So customers or staff who want to buy stock, do buy stock at the end of the week on Fridays when we aggregate the quantity and then sell to those who want to buy it. Like the local government, for example, they can come here and buy rice. The government also um, patronizes us substantially. They give an order and we fill a truck, 10 tons, 5 tons, as the case may be. There's no restriction. The only problem is that we are trying to manage the delivery in a way that is economical for us and also serving the community well. Uh, I have a question. Uh, from the look of things, you have a large industry here. You don't know how many people are in your team. How many people do you think you are in your team? At the moment, we are employing 102 today. 18 of them are graduates. 55 are women. Um, but as they, we are still building up our capacity, at full production, we will get about 157. That is the full establishment. But today is 102. But remember also that the people who supply us paddy are farmers. So we have links to about 3,000 farmers in Ebony State. Yes. Well, it's interesting, someone was, what is the Margo's interest in agriculture? But I think I need to make three points quickly. The first point to make is um, someone has, I was surprised seeing <coughs> Tali Ugu. We call him Tali Ugu. Chief Ugu here. But no surprise again because he has been an industrialist. He has been at the center of production. He has been president of man. But what's the point I'm trying to make? That if a country doesn't have people like him, the indigenous capitalist elite that can support the effort of government, it is very difficult to make progress. And it's a challenge to other people like him who have had the privilege of being in the private sector and in government to carry this thing to the rural areas. He has left the comfort of his home in Uwere, his home in Abuja, his home in uh, Lagos, because for somebody who was director of marketing of ITI by 1970-something, he, he doesn't need to be in a rural area, but there is a vision and a mission. The second point to make is that this is a partnership with the federal government. In other words, the federal government is stimulating the agro allied industrialization in the rural areas. And we need to also hype it. And to encourage the federal government to do more. We have talked about 402 direct employment and over 3,000 indirect employment. That's the synergy we need so that we can reduce the number of kidnappers, the number of armed robbers, the number of people into crime. But the third point again is about our daddy, the government. Government cannot go into partnership with a private sector group in a state that the federal government, if the state government does not give support. And um, our eminent industrialists, you know, made the point that the state government provided a land and part of the infrastructure. And these things I think we should commend. And we, again, for the people of the locality where this has been situated, there is also the need to encourage the state government, the federal government, and the industrialists by keeping the peace, by not making excessive demands. Because when we make some of these excessive demands on those who are coming to stimulate a, a development and to create the platform and the template for employment and for industrial takeoff, we also discourage our development. I'd like to thank all the partners and all the parties. Thank you very much. Please, allow me, allow me to make one point about the, about the credit matter. I, I think it's worth saying when we talk about partnership, we got a loan of 560 million from the federal government on the rice intervention scheme at 4% interest. Without that, we would never we would never have started. Second thing, under the Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme, the federal government to the CBN has given us a credit line of 1.2 billion to buy paddy. That interest is at 7% per year. If you pay interest at around 16% with the banks we are demanding, you will not succeed. So CBN has been a tremendous support. Federal government has supported us now. And that has been a major fillet, a major push for us in the line we are going. There's a second meal starting soon in Adani. Very good meal, slightly bigger than this. 
also which was allocated to us at the beginning we are now establishing that mill now so i'm grateful to the government for the opportunity PPP, yeah. equity again is 560 million, 40 percent from the federal government in terms of of the long-term loan, and 20 uh, percent from us with working capital from the commercial bank. We have established good credibility with the commercial bank, Fidelity Bank, and they are very supportive of the, the effort. Of bank of Industry is supporting us. It is the management agent for the government investment on the rice intervention scheme. The 560 million, the 40 percent they gave us came from, is managed by Bank of Industry. Relationships are excellent in that regard. But can you give me one bag? Small bag that we can hold up. Small, smaller bag. Well, um, Your Excellency, your yeah, Excellency, the, the Governor of uh, the Boeing State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's okay, please, can you move back? Let Move back, let the media cover us. Move far back, thank you. Now, the, this program that you are seeing here, is under the new Agricultural Transformation Agenda, ATA, which is being promoted by the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Adesina. The federal government policy is to make sure Nigeria is self-sufficient in rice production by 2015. We want to stop rice importation. The government of President Goodluck Jonathan is going to stop price importation by 2015. We are doing so because Nigeria has enough capacity to produce rice and to export rice. We have everything that we need. We have the river basins, we have developed rice farms which went into disrepair. But the reason why you are seeing action here is that the government is now running agriculture as a business. Nowhere government will come here to put public servants to begin to sell rice. It will never work. We tried that in the 70s. It never worked. The new agricultural policy is business driven with private sector. The rice intervention fund, which is now giving credit at 4% to rice millers here, is a deliberate policy of government to ensure that Nigeria is self-sufficient in milling rice that will compete with rice meal in any other country in the world. What we are seeing here is not only taking place here. He has just told you we went to Adani and I was telling people there that Adani will soon rise. This is the evidence today. The big rice meal at Lower Anambra, again, the Minister of Agriculture has visited there. We have put together private people to take over that meal. So in the next one year or so, Nigeria will be milling rice at the capacity that will begin to meet substantial portion of the domestic market. We are also working on rice in KB, working on rice in Adamawa, where there is both production and milling. So when we are talking about a new change in agriculture, people keep saying nothing is happening. We have just come to show you an example here. You are seeing that agriculture is taking off. He has told you the people that are feeding this meal are farmers from Eboi, from Adamawa, and Nasarawa state. Meanwhile, the ad growers will not be growing more rice because more rice can be taken from them. And that is how the backward integration will take place. You will not promote growing of rice because you can readily sell to the factories to meal for domestic consumption and export. Added to what the governor of Eboi state is doing, we are having another rice meal there beside this one by Boeing State, which will also be handed over to the private sector. And they are doing three meals, one in each center in a Boeing State. So we want to give you this assurance that when we talk of a national transformation program in agriculture, we are doing so because 
The president today has a program that is different from any program in the past. We were doing green revolution, we were doing uh, all sorts of agricultural programs based on the fact that government will take the lead in agriculture. That has not worked. So this new program, you can see in less than one year, is producing one of the best rice that you can get anywhere in the world. The market for it at home cannot be satisfied. So the government is expanding, giving additional loans to other rice millers across the country to set up mills. So all Nigerians, please, the reason why I'm raising this back is that this is the rice the president is eating today at Aso Villa. There is no imported rice in the villa. This is the rice we are eating, ebony rice or father rice. Nigerians should show patriotism. If we want this country to develop and we want our children to get jobs, then you must eat what we produce. Once you buy a bag of foreign rice, you are exporting jobs to Thailand, to, um, uh, to India, to Vietnam, another country that don't have our capacity to produce rice. So 167 million people, if all of us can buy milk, meal in Nigerian rice, we are going to create millions of jobs for our children on the farm, in the factories, and in the marketplace. That is the program the president is doing at the moment. This, in the last one and a half years, we have created an estimated two million jobs. And many Nigerians don't understand this. It is because as these means are taking off, new jobs are coming up. In Kano, we are doing vegetable milk, tomato, honey in Kano and several other centers. So this is the new agriculture, the one that we put food on the table. And two days ago, the Minister of Agriculture was at DAPO to present the agricultural program to all investors. All of them said they are coming to Nigeria because they have not seen anything like this in, an, in any African country in recent times. Now call on the media, please. Like Mr. Agu was saying there. We sit in Abuja and say nothing is happening. Instead of reporting disagreement and quarrels between politicians, please come here and report the progress Nigeria is making. If we do this, our country will make progress. This is the third factory we are visiting. We visited Innocent Vehicle Manufactory at Innewi, and yesterday we visited Innocent Technical Manufactory at Enugu. You see that the new Nigeria is different. We are seeing things produced, things that are practical. That is why the president is different. When people say all sorts of things, don't believe them. We are definitely going to succeed. There is no reason for us to fail. But we need your cooperation and better reporting of Nigeria. Thank you very much.